As you may know, I'm relatively new to YouTube and I'm trying to grow this channel, but it's not really my area of expertise. I don't really know what I'm doing. But yesterday I had an idea to just analyze what other people with coding channels are doing on YouTube and run some data analysis to find out what works and what doesn't. This is stuff I do know things about. So let's go through the things I've found out. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a plot that involves this goldfish. So stay tuned for that. So what did I do first? I needed the data that I got using a tool called vidIQ that provides a CSV file like this for a channel. So you get the titles of all the videos, the date published, the views, and a bunch of other metrics. Read in that file for free code camp, the largest coding channel on YouTube. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of columns that are not really relevant to us. We don't need this ID. We don't need the description. We don't need the status. So here we drop all the irrelevant columns, clean up our data frame a little bit. So we're left with only the relevant stuff being the duration of the video, the published date, the views, the likes and the comments. In the likes column, we have values like this one that is 1.5k instead of 1,500. So we need to convert that into a numerical value in order to work with it. We do that in the next step here using regular expressions. Basically what it does, it looks for this k and if there's a k, it's going to delete it and multiply the number by a thousand. And if there's a m for a million, it's going to do the same thing with a multiplier of a million. When we try that out, this is what we get. You can see here in the original column, we had this 1.5K, but in our likes numeric column, we now have a value of 1,500. So that worked. And also at the tail end of the data frame, we had a bunch of entries that were just like, so just text, and those were set to zero. We do the same thing now for the comments and drop the original non-numeric columns. We have the likes numeric and the comments numeric, and the other two columns are dropped. In the next step, we want to introduce two performance metrics being the views per like. So how many views you need in order to get one like in a video and how many views you need to get one comment in a video. So views divided by likes and views divided by comments. Because a video might have a lot of views, but people don't like the video. Maybe it just has a clickbait title or a clickbait thumbnail. So a lot of people click on the video, it gets a lot of views, but then people don't actually watch it because it's a bad video. Because of that, we need those two metrics. We need to delete all the videos with zero views and zero likes because otherwise we divide by zero. Before we do that, let's check those videos out because maybe there's something we can learn from those. We check what is the average number of views and in this channel, Free Code Camp, it's about 430,000. And if we then check the videos that get zero likes, they also don't have that many views. So here, 27,000, 39,000, which is not a lot compared to the channel average. So it's safe to say that there's not that much to learn from these videos, other than maybe a negative example of how not to do it. So we can drop them and we can do the same with the comments now. We check for all the videos that have zero comments. Those are actually quite a lot. So we set the display max rows parameter to none. So we can actually see all the entries of the data frame without this truncation here. Look again at the views, 4,000 views, 2,000 views, 2,000, maximum being 20,000. With a channel average of 400,000, those videos are not that impressive, so we can drop them. Let's have a look what the data frame looks like now that we've kicked out all these videos. We've actually reduced it from 1,684 rows to 1,589. Now we can introduce our performance metric, views per like and views per comment. We create the two new columns for our data frame and then sort all the videos by views per like. The views per like ratio varies quite a bit from 16.5 to 215. Let's have a look at the top 100 videos in terms of views per like. And let's see if this already tells us something. We see in the top 20, we have a lot of short form videos. So everything that's under a minute is a YouTube short. But we also see that the view count is not that high. 18,000, 60,000, 10,000 with a channel average of 400,000 views. It's not that impressive. On top of that, YouTube shorts should usually get more views than the longer form videos because you can simply watch them faster. But before we filter for the number of views, let's first filter for Python videos because my channel is a dedicated Python channel. So I don't really care about CSS tutorials or HTML. To filter for Python videos, look where the title contains the string Python. And we're down from around 1,500 videos down to 150 so only about 10 percent are python videos which makes it easier for us to work with this data frame we see in the top five we have short form videos but again the view count is not that high so let's filter for that 
we calculate the average number of views for all the Python videos. And again, we land somewhere above 400,000. Let's define that as a cutoff and then only look at videos that have gotten more than 400,000 views. Because if we want to learn something from a video, it should probably have more views than the channel average. In order to show the full title, we set the parameter display max call width to none. To read the numbers a little bit easier, we add these comma separators. By the way, this is not the best way to do that. I'll show you in the next script what a better solution for that is. So don't copy that part of the code. And yes, this Jupyter script and all the other scripts will be available in the description. Now the best views per like ratio now is 29 at a view count of 1.6 million for advanced computer vision with Python. And you see there's still a lot of web programming and other things in there, which is not really what I want to focus on in this channel, which is Python for scientists and engineers. So what I did next is write down the numbers of the videos that fall into my niche. Here are all the indices that I want to filter for. This is the final selection. Our views per like metric goes from 29 to 76, which is almost a factor of three. So if we look at the last video in our list here, data analysis with Python for Excel users, it does have a lot of views, but apparently not that many likes, which tells me that the idea of the video is interesting to people, but the way they made the video is probably not that good, which is why it didn't get too many likes. Whereas at the top of the table, you have a video that is published around the same time as the last one, has less views actually, but a lot better views per like ratio. Meaning it's actually interesting to fewer people, but the ones that are interested in the topic like this video a lot better. So it would be very interesting to see now what the difference is in the making of this video and this video. But for now, let's write out our final selection to file. When I said earlier that adding these commas here wasn't the best way to do it, this is why, because now we have to delete them again in order to write out our table in a float format. So in this notebook, I wanted to show you all the steps that were necessary in order to clean up the table in the beginning and then get to our final result here. However, in a production code, you would not need all these different print statements and all these sub steps. So what we do here for the second channel is to put all the cleaning stuff into one function where we drop the columns, make the likes and comments numeric, kick out videos without likes and comments, introduce our performance metrics, delete all the videos with less than average view count and do some formatting in the end. We just have to call our function with a new data set of the channel Neural9, who is a little bit closer to what I'm doing, but it's a smaller channel where the average view count is just 36,000. To compare his channel with the other two larger channels, I defined another cutoff to be at 100,000. But even here you see there's still a lot of information that doesn't have anything to do with Python, JPEG files, C programming, filtered by the indices of the videos that fall closer into my niche. The videos with the most views are not necessarily the ones that are liked the most, but we're going to compare that to the other channels in the next step. For the third channel, I simplified our Python script even more. We have a helper functions file where we have our convert to numeric function, our clean YouTube CSV, and also the pandas default values. All we need to do now is to call our function on the data set. His channel has an average view count of over 900,000 when even free code camp only had an average of 400,000. A lot of videos are not really relevant for me. Front end development skills, videos about jobs. I don't really care about that. So again, we filter all the videos that contain Python in the title, which narrows it down to these eight videos. We write that to file and now we can compare the three channels. We read all the CSV files back in and combine them all to one data frame so we can sort them by views per like. Neural9 has the highest ranking video in terms of views per like with progress bars in Python terminal. However, the views are just barely above 100,000, whereas the next video in our list has a view count of 1.6 million from Free Code Camp about advanced computer vision with Python. Now we can debate what is more important, views per like, views per comment, or total number of likes, total number of views. We can sort this list in different ways here we sorted it by views per like and the next one we sorted by views per comment and also here neural line leads the pack with progress bars in python terminal apparently it didn't get too many views but a lot of people liked it and a lot of people commented on it and if you look at this metric neural line and mosh dominate the top 10 free code camp only has one video in here with a thousand views per comment that makes the top 10 list so apparently free code camp is really good at getting views but they might not be the best at making the videos engaging in order to get the likes and the comments by views free code camp has seven out of ten in the top 10 list but if we now compare the first two videos, Learn Python Full Course for Beginners Tutorial and Python Tutorial, Python Full Course for Beginners, basically the exact identical title, published half a year apart from one another, view count 44 million and 39 million. You could say just looking at the views, 
free code cam got more views so i guess the video is better but if we look at the comments they got 56,000 compared to 44,000. so our views per comment metric is at 706 instead of a thousand now for the likes we can't really say because this is a rounded value this is where we converted 1m to 1 million so we would have to look at the exact numbers to be precise here but if we want to learn something from their youtube channels mosh has a more engaging way of involving the viewers to leave a comment what else can we learn from this table? If we look at the top five, we see that the first three, 44, 39, and 17 million views, but the video in the fifth spot only has 4.5 million views. So that's a factor of 10 less than the number one video. Most of the views go to these top three videos, which are all Python videos for beginners. And there's only one video in here that is dedicated to non-beginners, intermediate Python programming course. This one only has 3.6 million views. It's still a lot of views, but it also tells you a lot of people start beginning to learn programming, but then fall off. It's kind of like when you go to a gym in the first week of January and all the people with their New Year's resolutions are in there. You check back two weeks later and they're gone. So what does that tell us? If you're a beginner, stick to it. And for me as a creator, apparently beginner content is gonna attract more people. But what I also find interesting is that the top five videos here are all very long format videos. So the shortest one here is an hour long and the longest one is 15 hours long. I would have thought that it makes more sense to cut videos up into smaller 10, 20 minute pieces and make a playlist out of it so that if I look only for the plotting part of a lecture, then I can only watch that video instead of watching everything from top to bottom. But the data we also don't have here is how many of those views actually finished the video till the end. So how many of these views watched the entire video? Unfortunately, I cannot get that data. If anyone knows why it's better to have these longer format videos instead of cutting them up into smaller videos, let me know in the comments. You know the performance metric now, views per like, views per comment. So please leave a like and a comment just for science purposes. And as I promised you in the very beginning, the plot with a goldfish, I expected when I first looked at these metrics that there would be more short form videos in the top rankings. However, we cut almost all of them out when we filtered for the number of views, when in principle it should be easier to watch a 60 second video than a 15 hour long video. And the reason why I think short form videos should be better is because according to Microsoft, the average attention span of a human is lower than that of a goldfish as of 2015. I guess because of phone addictions or whatever, our attention spans are declining, so short form videos should cater to that. But we'll see. I'll just try it out and then we see what we get. All that being said, if this video gets 100 likes, I'll create another video showing you how to get all the YouTube data directly in Python instead of using vidIQ.